All right, so as you can see, I have the um, ASRock 939 Dual out of its case once more um, because we're going to be doing a little bit of surgery. I've already done some modification before, um, and it had to do with these capacitors up here near the CPU. Um, basically, all six of these were uh, bloated. Um, I've replaced four of them here with some spares that I found in a box, uh, which managed to get the system to actually post. Uh, without those, it was, you know, flaky, hesitant to even show anything on the screen. Um, but I only had four, which left uh, these two here still. Um, so I don't have a lot of problems with the board, but I have noticed that on some ATI AGP cards, I'm getting graphical errors, and I don't know if that has to do with um, a uh, power supply issue uh, to the slot. Um, you know, as far as, you know, the board being able to regulate the power and uh, keep it clean. Uh, most of the errors I'm getting graphical, um, graphics-wise, are, uh, they appear to be memory-related. Uh, so I know that can be very um, power-intensive. Um, so I'm going to replace the, those last two ones. I've got uh, some more of these that I had ordered. Um, Rubicon Japanese capacitors are much higher quality than the ones that were on the board. And these are identical to the ones that I've installed uh, already. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I didn't put nearly enough thermal paste on the CPU last time. Um, so uh, we're going to be a little bit more generous with that. Um, and yeah, we'll see if that hopefully fixes the problem. Okay, I'm about a couple minutes into the project. I've already removed one of them. Um, and I just kind of want to briefly, uh, let you know what my technique is, uh, for doing this. Um, so on the underside of the board, uh, once you locate where the pins are, um, the next one I have to do is right here. Basically what I do is I use this, um, solder remover tool. And if I can remove some of the solder, I will, but there's not a lot there to actually remove. Instead, what I do is I use the hole at the tip of the solder remover um, and put that over the pin um, and just kind of uh, move it around. So basically, put it over the pin and kind of rotate it around and that will heat up the pin. And as I'm doing that, I'm pulling on the capacitor and it gradually lifts it up. So I'm heating the pin from all sides in a circular motion uh, to try to get it up and that seems to work the best and the fastest for me. Alright so let me go ahead and finish this up. Alright so uh, the next step is to basically uh, clean up um, the holes. You're gonna end up with a lot of messy solder around um, the inside there and basically what I do is I just take a exacto knife you can use a sharp object um, really of any kind I just kind of gently go inside and I kind of um, wiggle it a little bit kind of carve out very gently um, to get all the excess solder out so I could actually fit some pins into uh, the holes there uh, where they need to go. All right, and there is the two capacitors installed. Uh, the board's pretty much ready to go. I was inspecting all the other capacitors. I didn't see any others that looked blown. Um, so hopefully that resolves the issue. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, reassemble the system and test it and find out. All right, so as you can see, it is on and working. Um, 
and it boots up just fine. Uh, so the capacitor mod was a success. Uh, which I knew um, two weeks ago when I first tried to turn it on, but uh, then immediately after switching it on and testing it, uh, my hard drive decided to die. Uh, so basically, <laughs> um, I delayed the second part of this video until I could actually get the uh, new drive in there and actually have offering the system up and running and uh, some applications tested out and uh, you know to really confirm that everything was as it should be um, and this was made possible by a generous donation uh, from a user on dayonepatch.com by the name of Knox uh, he actually gave me a solid state disk, so I don't have to deal with uh, mechanical drives failing on me. I've got a bunch of dead mechanical drives uh, in my drawer, which don't do me much good. Um, but yeah, it's running super well. So as you can see, I do have the machine up and running at... Uh, 2.8 gigahertz um, now one thing I did confirm uh, one of the reasons I switched out the capacitors um, well a couple of reasons I wanted to do in the first place just because it, it was bothering me that I had leaky capacitors on my motherboard um, but the second reason was to try and find out if uh, that was causing issues with uh, some of my ATI cards uh, for example, this one down here, my 9800 Pro, uh, was giving me artifacts in a couple of DirectX 9 games. I couldn't understand. Anything with pixel shading was giving me artifacts. Um, so I just thought maybe that had something to do with the power delivery that was affected by leaky capacitors. Uh, that was not the problem. It was the uh, paste had completely dried up under the cooler. Uh, so I just took the cooler off and we changed out the paste, uh, cleaned it all up. Um, now it runs perfectly, so I had nothing to do with that. One thing I did notice, though, uh, the clocks are actually a lot more stable now. Um, before, it would jump around quite a bit. Um, it is holding really firm at that bus speed of 312 megahertz right now. Uh, which was not the case before it would jump quite a bit um, so yeah um, really happy with that but um, you know the main thing is that it's working um, whether or not there's actually any benefits to it it's better to have uh, new and uh, functional capacitors on there rather than leaky ones just in terms of uh, the long-term health of the system because I will be using this quite a bit uh, for testing. A lot of my benchmarks actually have to be rerun um, because some of my tests uh, are having to be thrown out. Um, so I got quite a bit more work to do and I still have more graphics cards yet to acquire but it is up and running and thanks once again to Noct for making that possible. Solid State Disk is uh, screaming in this system. It's got um, a SATA 2 connection. Actually, the motherboard has exactly one SATA 2 connector on there, so you know, might as well use it, right? Um, the solid state disk is technically SATA 3, so it's actually um, probably more than necessary. It's major overkill, but uh, you know, the main thing is reliability. That's my main concern. I don't really care so much about the speed, although it does make testing a lot faster like <laughs> as things really uh, start up quickly. Um, it's kind of crazy compared to, it's hard to, to know without actually seeing uh, what it was like. Oh, of course it's going to make me a liar because I... Oh, that's why. Uh, that's a Steam game. I'm going to load up something that's not a Steam game. Uh, here's Far Cry running. Um, I 
have the keyboard here. i just load a quick level just to show uh, load times on a solid state disk. Even though it's only a, a dual core Athlon 64, it's you know an ancient system running a modern solid state disk. Um, to start a new game. Far Cry is a difficult game, so I'm just going to run it on easy mode. Uh, so we'll just see what this does. Uh, before it was running a 120 gigabyte Maxter drive, which was 5400 RPM, and it only had two megs of cache, um, and this blows it away. Load times will be affected by the CPU greatly because the CPU has a lot to do with uh, decompressing textures and loading them into memory. Uh, so there's only so much a hard drive can do, but I will tell you right now, that was easily twice as fast as it used to be. Um, so this is going to make benchmarking way smoother and faster. All right, so uh, that is a success story. It just took a long time to uh, reach the conclusion. But uh, thanks anyway for watching.